In this video, you're going to learn how to paint a cardboard model so that you can level up your creations by adding enhanced realism and just color. And in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating everything on this cardboard gun. This is what the finished model is going to look like, but you can apply this to any of your cardboard creations. Hi there, my name's Eli Tennant with MakerBrain, helping you access and implement your creativity through DIY projects. And on this channel, I release a new video every other week to help you with the best tips, techniques, and tools for makers just like you and me. So let's get into the video. All right, so I have the gun here and it's already been spray primed gray. You can see that it's painted completely over and the barrel comes off to make it easier to paint. I just used a spray primer. It wasn't that expensive and then sprayed it over, sanded it, sprayed it over again. What that is doing is it's giving all the cardboard an even finish because there are some parts on here that actually aren't even cardboard. You're also going to want to try and wipe it down as much as you can with like a rag. So after you've spray primed it and then sanded down that primer a little bit, wipe it off to get off all the dust. From there, you're going to have a gun just like this here and you can start painting. Now, I do have a picture of a Stormtrooper blaster right there. Uh, for a little bit of reference, but I'm not gonna be following that that much. So starting off I'm going to do this barrel and I'm gonna paint the uh, main part all black and then these fins here and some of this on the end I'm going to make red because red just looks cool. Another advantage of spray priming your models, or priming them in any way, it doesn't necessarily have to be spray, uh, is that it's much easier to paint, the paint sticks very well, and you don't need to do as many coats. So here you notice that I'm brushing in one direction that's going to help keep the gun looking more uniform rather than having brush strokes all over it. Uh, you might try be aiming for like almost like a brushed aluminum look but going in one direction is going to keep it looking nice and the light's going to reflect off it in the same way. Even though I'm not trying to make brush strokes I'm trying to like hide those as much as possible. Brush in one direction. So I'm working around the nozzle right here and the trickiest part with this is really the cutting in. So like when I'm trying to get right close to those edges that I'm going to make red later, I don't want to get too much of this black paint up there because black is going to be really hard to paint over. And then another cool thing when you're using this paint is that you almost forget it's cardboard sometimes and it can cover up some of those imperfections. Something you want to keep in mind when you're painting cardboard like this is that uh, as I'm painting over these ridges on the top, I want to try and jam the brush down in those a little bit to get the paint all the way down. So I'm going to get a little bit of a generous amount of paint on here and make sure that I'm getting it all the way in there so that you can't really see the gray beyond the red. I'm also going to need to lay this red paint a little bit thicker than the black because 
it's easier to see through and tell that I used a gray primer underneath. Something that you're also going to want to keep in mind is how you're supporting the model. So right now, I have these fins to hold from, and that's pretty easy for me to grip. But once I paint over those, it's going to get more difficult. So I'm going to want to paint as much of the model as I can before I paint those so that I don't end up getting paint all over my fingers or having to set it down and paint it in a really awkward way. So I'm noticing that as I'm painting this here and I uh, get close to the edges, if I have a lot of paint in my brush, it's going to push like a big glob or almost like a burr, pushing it over the edge of the brush and it's going to push it down all the way onto the black. And that's not really going to do me very much good because then I have like leak over onto the black. It doesn't look very nice. So you want to paint the large amount on the top and then you can kind of use that to paint the bottom areas as you go across those. Alright, so I just finished the barrel. I have it right here. I've got the white, the black, and the red. I think the black and the red actually don't go together super well, and I guess I'm okay with that. And there's some imperfections on here. You can probably see for some areas where I messed up, and I can touch those up on the at the end with uh, a finer brush uh, once the paint is dried so I don't like mix things together, and that'll be a lot easier than trying to fix them right now. And a few things to remember from here is you want to paint more with those lighter colors. That's kind of just a general painting tip is you want these lighter colors like white, you might have to do two layers to get it to look good. Other than that, we also have to remember to, especially on these very protruding zigzags of the cardboard, you want to jam paint in there, make sure it gets in there really well. And painting inside these holes can also be a bit challenging, you're going to need a lot of paint and kind of gloop it in there. And you just want to remember to prime before you paint and that'll make it a lot easier and you'll save quite a bit of paint by doing that.
All right, so we just finished painting this gun, but what did we learn along the way? Well, first is before painting, you want to prepare your model. So down here, I actually have a bigger gun that I've been working on, and I've been doing a lot of preparing with this model. So most of that has been involving uh, spackling in. So this is almost like drywall mud. Uh, the kind of stuff you'd use to fill in drywall, but it's really easy to work with, and I've used it to fill in a bunch of the gaps, and in many areas, even the uh, ridges of the cardboard, so it'll look a whole lot smoother, particularly on the scope in a lot of areas. And then there's sanding that you'd have to do after that, but that is one way to prepare your model and have it look a lot nicer. But now, when you're painting the model, is you want to start with the lightest colors first, because you can paint over those with the dark colors. So uh, I would want to start with my whites first and then do all of those so that any spillover can just be covered by the black because the black is way darker. It'll cover all my whites and then the red is darker than the white as well. And some of it shows through, but if I put a black stain over here, it's going to take a lot of coats of white to go on that. And that's another point. Sometimes you are going to have to do multiple coats to just get things to look a lot nicer. And when you're painting, you want to try and get your strokes to be in the same direction. So like on this scope, I did them all in the same direction or along here. They're all going around it along this. They're all up and down. So they don't all have to be like congruent facing the same direction. It kind of depends upon the look of your model. But in general, it helps to have all the brush strokes in one area going in the same direction. Now, particularly for cardboard, if you haven't filled it in like I was just showing you, filled in these gaps, it can make your model look more professional if you jam paint down into these crevices. But now something you didn't just see me do in the video is weather this gun. And actually, there are many ways to weather a model, but they that just makes it look like it's a real world item and actually used. So you could do a light and dark wash. So that involves just getting light colors and doing those on like the edges and then dark cover colors in the crevices. So you'd have like a black mixed with a bunch of water and then you'd kind of put the in the crevices or a silver mixed with water and then you kind of put that along the outsides. I'm not really that great at that. So I took the easier route and just went out to our yard, found some dirt, got it on my hands, used the gun a little bit as if I was actually using it. And then that kind of puts dirt on the areas where dirt would sort of naturally be. Plus I rubbed some dirt around on it. So for models, particularly like this gun and functional stuff, uh, props, it really adds another level to make it weathered. And the very last thing you're going to want to do to your cardboard models is add some sort of spray. So like a polyurethane spray or a coating would be a great idea to just kind of seal it all in. So your weathering isn't going to come back off. And if you have something that you don't want to look weathered, it'll stay cleaner that way. It's got more durability and longevity. It's also easier to clean off any dirt without like having it all soak in or have the paint get all ruined. So I did not do that on this model yet, but if I start carrying it around and using it as a prop more often, then I will definitely add that. Do you prefer to paint your cardboard models like this? I'd assume you do if you watch this video, but, or do you prefer to leave them with their more raw cardboard look like this? It's actually kind of attractive with that DIY utilitarian feel. So just let me know in the comments below. That'd be super awesome. If you want to learn more about working with cardboard, I have a cardboard basics playlist right there. And then if you want to see the video that YouTube thinks is best for you, go ahead and check that out. If you are still watching this video, you're totally awesome. And I want to encourage you to go make something today. It doesn't have to be big, just something to put your creativity towards. As always, I'm Eli Tennant, and if you want to see more videos like this one, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. God bless you. See you next time.